All right, Doug, so let's start by explaining what this machine is and how this all got started. Sure, this is what we're calling the Nova Scotia Emergency Ventilator. Mm -hmm. So what this is, is a what's a, a nearly full-featured modern uh, mechanical ventilator for obviously for patients who would be breathing to be disabled by COVID. Everybody knows that right now, everybody's worried about a shortage of ventilators in hospitals. The industry only makes so many ventilators a year and the whole supply chain is backed up. Right. So the whole point of this project was to create a ventilator that is uh, essentially uh, either made in Nova Scotia or any parts that are purchased that are not made in Nova Scotia to be outside the medical supply chain, outside the stressed medical supply chain. So there's something that, that can become available in a very, very short time. So a consortium we put together, uh, it just, it, it's a loose consortium that yep. we put together that includes uh, protocase, mm -hmm. 45 drives, uh, advanced glazings, makerspace, so Novacorp's uh, Sydney-based makerspace, uh, a really cool engineering company in Halifax called Ingenuity, and Cape Breton U University as well is, is, is going to be contributing to the project. Oh, great, okay. Got to stress, this is a community project, mm -hmm. and it's not a protocase project. Protocase kind of been the host for it. It's very much a community project. So, so let's talk about ventilators broadly. You know, at one end of the spectrum, you've got a bag, the Ambu bag, that you could just squeeze air into a patient's lungs. Everybody sees them on the uh, TV yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. in the back of the ambulance. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you've got some very, very sophisticated um, uh, ICU-grade technology. Tell us where you think this fits in in terms of that spectrum. Well, it's interesting, you know, the first step when the ideas started coming together on this was to consult uh, people in emergency medicine and in respiratory technology. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll give credit for the genesis of this project to Dr. Chris Milburn, yeah. and uh, he's the head ER for Eastern District in Nova Scotia. Right. Chris's participation in this was absolutely critical, yep. and one of the first things Chris did was bring in a respiratory technician, and right. we got the input from a, a gentleman named Bruce Morrison, who's a, a Cape Breton-based respiratory tech, okay. and, and they've been mission critical in guidance on this project since, since, since early on. And, and really, the picture that came out, you know, a, a, an Ambia bag being operated by a, uh, uh, say, a windshield wiper motor. There's something that's on the internet and uh, rumor has it they use those in Italy when they face ventilator shortages. Number one, it's better than nothing. Right. Okay. Right. But the problem is that uh, the patient has their own breathing rhythm and you can't synchronize it. That, that's the 1950s iron lungs were, were, were the same way. Uh, and so, you know, today's ventilators, the biggest leap forward is the fact that, uh, that they can actually synchronize with patients' breathing rhythms. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that, that became our goal. We said, we need to make a machine that has all the basics that modern ventilators have, and, and in particular, the ability to synchronize with a patient's, um, the patient's own breathing rhythms. If you don't synchronize with the patient's breathing rhythms, uh, it was said to me by the, uh, the, the emergency medicine people that then you have to really paralyze the, uh, the patient for a while to suppress their own breathing rhythms, which is, uh, in their world, much less than ideal.